Welcome back into Riders Block. We are live from the Sky Bar at the Waldorf Astoria in beautiful Las Vegas, Nevada. Summer League is underway. The World Series main event is underway, and we have a great show planned for you. A lot of NBA talk. Carl Anthony Towns will be on the program. Top Memphis recruit James Wiseman is going to be on the show. And some uh, braggadocio out of the Eastern Conference that may not be a good idea. All of that more starting right now. As you know, it is an utterly diff different NBA landscape than it was a week ago. One of the cool things about being at Summer League is you walk into a casino, a conference room, a hotel lobby, a restaurant. You're going to bump into people you know from the association. And a parlor game this week is talking about the pecking order and arguing about the pecking order in the Eastern and Western conferences. There's a lot of different views and a lot of different teams with some confidences they certainly can't all live up to. We'll include James Ennis, re recently resigned with the Sixers, as one of those guys feeling really good about himself when asked why he decided to resign in Philly he said and I quote the East is going to be wide open we had a good chance last year Kawhi is gone he went to the West so we're going to walk to the finals in the East James my guy I think I actually saw James Ennis in the lobby earlier I was going to say this to him but I decided to just do it on the show you might want to tamp down the overstatement and just go out there and do your thing and I like the confidence for the Sixers I love the moves that they made. We know some of the changes. You've got Al Horford in, Jimmy Butler is out, JJ Redick now in New Orleans. And I think you could see some addition by subtraction in large part with Jimmy Butler going somewhere else. I love the Josh Richardson addition as part of that Jimmy Butler sign and trade with the Heat. I love Horford as a leader, but this Philly team has got a lot of things that they've got to improve upon. One of them is certainly the ability to get Ben Simmons to work on his jump shot. And we don't know what Simmons is doing right now. We're focused on summer league and young guys. If Simmons is somewhere in a gym working on that jump shot, developing the opportunity and the ability to hit some threes, to just take some threes, the way Giannis really did this last year under Mike Budenholzer, I love what Philly can be. I think that they can be better because they do have two superstars, budding superstars on that roster in Simmons and Embiid, but Ben Simmons has got to be able to get it done. And I'll give Brett Brown the props for, for what he said recently. He, he's right. There's certainly a lot to be excited about, a lot of reasons for optimism when you look in a vacuum at this Sixers organization. There's lots to be proud of. we got two all-stars that, that, that uh, are very young. I think that the culture, the foundation of how we try to work and do things uh, is on point. I'm proud of what we've built. And so now to, to take that next step, that is the mission, that is the challenge. No one's higher on the idea of what Simmons and Embiid can be together. Embiid's going to be, if he's healthy, and that's a big if, a perennial MVP candidate. If Ben Simmons, again, I keep harping on this because it's so important, if he can develop a jump shot, if he can just find a way to stretch the floor a little bit and not just be a player who attacks and plays downhill, he can be one of the best two or three players in the game for a very, very long time. But you're not going to win an NBA championship when one of your two best guys can't shoot the rock. You see the numbers there. The guy has literally never hit a three-point shot in his NBA career. 0 for 17. I don't know what's more problematic. The zero or the fact he's only taken 17 three-point shots. He has to work on this. And in related news, I, I think Jimmy Butler, I, in fact, think, I talk to sources. I know Jimmy Butler rubs people the wrong way. He's not great in the locker room. He is great on the floor, especially in the playoffs. As a two-way player, as a defensive stud, and as a guy, Jimmy Butler becomes Jimmy Buckets and will go get buckets for you. Who's going to score? Who's going to create in that offense in the postseason when it's hard to come by points for Philly? If Simmons doesn't work on this part of his game, I don't know how they're going to do it. The, the other concern that I have is this team called the Milwaukee Bucks, James Ennis. I don't know if you're going to walk through the East. Remember, you guys didn't have to face them, or as one of our producers said earlier today, you didn't earn the right to face them in the postseason. The Bucks did lose Malcolm Brogdon, that huge contract of the Pacers, but they are largely the team that they were last year with even more experience, with the reigning MVP, and with that taste of what it almost felt like to make an NBA Finals. They win that game three against Toronto. We're talking about maybe the Bucks as champions. They're the best team in the East. People know it. And the Boston Celtics, who, you know, actually had to try and face down and go through that Milwaukee team and couldn't do it in their head coach Brad Stevens explained and talked about what maybe James Ennis should be aware of and that is right now today the Bucks team to beat in the East. They've been building habits every day and those habits showed up and they showed up over and over again and you know we make a teaching tape every year the Bucks are going to be on a lot of clips 
I mean, they, they were tremendous. Um, and credit them, credit their coaches, credit their players. Um, you know, they're better than we are. Unless your name is Kawhi Leonard, literally Giannis Antetokounmpo is basically unguardable. And again, working on that three-point shot. They re-sign Brooke Lopez. They bring in Robin Lopez. So they got the Lopez market cornered. They re-up Chris Middleton, not at the max, a little bit of flexibility. Not like Wesley Matthews is a superstar, but that's a nice addition. This Bucks team is the team to beat. And we're standing in Vegas. You can see behind me the city of sin, the beautiful thing that is a, uh, a monument to gambling that rose in the desert. Here are the odds, according to the very smart people that we're surrounded by for this upcoming season. Yeah, Philly's got a chance, but the Bucks are a really good team. And don't sleep on, on both Boston and I think the Pacers are interesting not to make an NBA Finals but to rough up a team in the postseason that maybe you wouldn't anticipate a team like Philly that doesn't have Jimmy Butler and again is going to need some help for someone to go out there and to get buckets to get points. I love Ennis's confidence. I love that he feels that way and I'm actually really high on Philly. I'm probably not going to make a bet on Philly. I thought about parlaying them in the NBA Finals with the, my Jazz pick at 15-1 to which we'll, we'll talk about tomorrow on the show. But I have some concerns, and the main concern is Milwaukee and Ben Simmons' development. So, Ennis, James Ennis, I love that you believe in your team. I would just maybe not talk about it quite so candidly. Though we thank you here on Runner's Block because it gave us uh, something to talk about. We're, um, we're going to keep talking some NBA. was able to catch up with Carl Anthony Towns, one of the most talented players in the NBA, who obviously, we know this, has not had the success, at least in a team sense, postseason success, that he's wanted. We'll visit with him about that and several other things when we come back to the program here in just a minute. All right, welcome back into the show. We're live from the Waldorf Astoria Sky Bar. As you can see, it is beautiful. They have amazing cocktails as well. We appreciate them making some time for us. And we appreciate Gatorade, our friends at Gatorade, making some time for us with guys like Carl Anthony Towns, who a couple days I caught up with, the Minnesota big man. We had a really interesting conversation. Here it is. All right, Bill Ryder here with Carl Anthony Towns, celebrating a lot of very impressive young people. Gatorade, many nominees for the Gatorade Athlete of the Year. Carl, thanks for, thanks for being here, man. Appreciate it. Thank you for having me. How's, uh, how's the offseason been? It's been good. I mean, uh, just watching the free agency and everything, it's been pretty interesting. <laughs> I'm, I'm with you. Those Woj bombs affect my life. They, they affect yours. D are you able to kind of disconnect from it, or, or when the deadline hits, are you following it as religiously as, as a lot of us fans? Um, you know, I think that for me, uh, such an important uh, summer for us in Minnesota that, you know, I was very, uh, very keen on every moment the free agency happened, anyone getting picked up. Uh, any players doing whatever they got to do and teams doing what they have to do to get ready for next season. Uh, it was something I was like any other fan. I was really close to my phone all the time. Uh, a lot of talk about what you guys are going to do. Jarrett Culver is the selection. There are some trades involved. H have you talked to Jarrett? Do you know much? Of, have you given much thought to how you think he can help and, and fit in with what you guys want to accomplish? Yeah, I think that you know, Jarrett, I've actually been able to uh, talk to him, hang out with him. Uh, understand who he is as a person, as a player, and also see how he is as a player during some workouts. So uh, he's a great player. He's very talented. The sky's the limit for him. Uh, it's our duty as uh, the vets to really make sure that we get him to that next level and we uh, show him what it is to be a professional basketball player in the NBA. Talking to some sources around the NBA, and this isn't a slide at all in the former regime there, but just heard that even over the last few weeks that the culture has felt really different there's a lot of enthusiasm, new general manager, and just the feeling in the building. Can you give us a sense of, of how much that reflects what, what you're experiencing? We're building something special in Minnesota, and, you know, it starts from the bottom to the top. And uh, we're doing a great job of uh, building a culture that is, uh, that's world-class. And we're building a world-class organization over there. Uh, Ryan Saunders is an amazing coach, uh, amazing person. Uh, Gerson is, I mean, one of one in the world. We got the best of uh, both worlds when you got a front office that's as well built as ours and have a coaching staff as well built as ours you know uh, you know sky's the limit for us obviously it's been a wild offseason lebron james has anthony davis now Kawhi and paul george are, are, are clippers utah got better portland's still there they added some really interesting pieces white side's a nice addition for neil oshay the gm i could go on and on but obviously the west is tough what do you guys need to do and you have a very talented young roster to try to force your way into that conversation in a grouping of a lot of good teams out west? I think that what we got to do is just continue to do what we're doing right now, changing the culture. Uh, we bring in some great players, Noah Vonley, Jake Lehman. Um, uh, I mean, you name it, we're bringing in a lot of great players and 
um, we got to continue doing that. Uh, I think that we've already made huge strides into being the team that we want to be next year, and uh, it's starting now, so we're getting ready. Uh, you and D'Angelo Russell are, are friends, I and mean, there's, there's friendships, there's, there's teammates, and sometimes there's both. Some talk maybe D'Lo might, might go that direction. He, he didn't, obviously, but have you talked to him much just about his experience? Because obviously he's in a different part of the country now, a different team. Yeah, I mean, I mean, we talk all the time. I talked yesterday, day before. I mean, that's my guy. That's my brother. So uh, I'm just happy that he uh, got what he wanted and he got everything he could ask for. I mean, that's all it is at the end of the day. You know, you're given so much time, so little time to play this game professionally. Uh, you just want to get the most out of it. And he's definitely doing that. Um, you know, I'm very happy that uh, he's happy. How do you think the fit for him will be with what's obviously been a very successful, although new look Warriors team? I mean, it's going to be interesting. We're all going to go watch out. I know the one thing is that he puts the work in, and he's a, a great teammate, so he'll make the best of any situation. We, um, we've um we had this argument on this show and on the radio show that I host, whether parity is good for the NBA or bad, whether people like it or don't like it, it feels like it's here. Is that right? As, as a player, do you look at the landscape now and feel like there is some distribution of the talent in a way we haven't seen the last five years or so? Um, I think that it kind of is, but it really isn't. I mean... The West is still where all everyone is, so uh, it's great to be part of such a such a jungle that is the West, because you know it, it makes the competition, it makes those games even more fun when every game matters so much more. Uh, I'm just happy that I get to go and compete against the best of the best every single night. And there's always a balance when you have time off, taking some time off, working on your game. What has your offseason been in terms of getting some time for Carl Anthony Towns and also working on whatever it is you want to work on on the basketball side? Life is all about balance. It's always been about balance, so just finding ways to balance not only, um, you know, my personal life, but also business and work, you know, is important. So finding time to really see my family, uh, take some vacations, understand, you know, my body better and uh, get a chance to go out there and uh, perform at a higher level, especially in my workout. So life is balance, just trying to mentally be right, right, uh, physically be right and spiritually be right. Travel anywhere cool this summer? Uh, not really. I mean, Turks and Caicos, that's on my Instagram. But, I mean, uh, everything else I keep on the radar. Right. I guess you gotta, right, got to keep it a little, a little private. Um, we're here because of the Gatorade Athletes of the Year and some very impressive nominees. We just visited all those folks. Well, what does it mean for you to be able to lend your name, your, your you know, you're a very well-known person, your, your star power to, to this event? Uh, I mean, you know, I'm just, just so honored to be here. I remember being here and being these guys and sitting in these chairs and, being so honored to be here and being so happy and you know I just try to tell them all the time is just to enjoy this moment you don't get this moment back there's not going to be another you never know if you'll get another chance to be sitting in these chairs or to be talking to uh, these well-respected reporters so uh, enjoy it soak it all in and uh, have fun. All right, before we let you go I know it's a, a crowded day for you the last few years most people would have pointed to the Warriors as, as the favorite maybe if quiet stay with the Raptors they'd be the favorite when you look out at the landscape excluding your own team do you see a team or two or three that you think is currently constructed are at least right now the team to beat everyone could be beat that's the greatest thing about basketball i mean uh the old school warriors the believe warriors the uh the, all these guys you know all these teams you could think of and anyone could get beat it's all about the the, the unity of a team and the willingness to sacrifice for each other uh and that comes with a culture and that's why it's so important what we're doing now in Minnesota because we're building that culture and we're going to be those, that team that uh, surprises a lot of people. Carl Anthony Towns, thanks to you and thanks to Gatorade for, for making, making you available. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. I'll say this for Kat. That is a stylish pajama kind of outfit. And sources tell me that right now, as I'm, as I'm talking to you from the Waldorf Astoria Sky Bar, producer May Roan, who's helping on the show today in Fort Lauderdale, is wearing the exact same outfit, man. Style on it, both coats, just spreading. That pajama look is so cool. We've got more. James Wiseman, the big man, a huge recruit, a very nice young dude. He'll be playing at Memphis next year. We also caught up with him. We'll play that interview, and we'll give you some insight on what he's capable of when we come back to the program writer's block here in just a minute. Welcome back into the beautiful Sky Bar at the Waldorf Astoria, Las Vegas. Bill Ryder with you here on the program. Thank you for being here. Just a minute, we're going to visit with James Wiseman, the top recruit at Memphis. But I want to give you some context on him and that program Penny Hardaway is putting together by going inside the numbers on a sleeping giant in the college basketball scene. We start at the number 930. Memphis is led by two guys that know how to win at the highest level. 
Head coach Penny Hardaway and assistant coach Mike Miller combined for 930 wins in their stellar NBA careers. Miller is a two-time NBA champion, while Hardaway is a four-time NBA All-Star. That is some recruiting power. How about 6'11"? Next up here on Inside the Numbers, in Hardaway's first season as head coach, he led the Tigers to a 61.1% winning percentage. Memphis finished fifth in the AAC, concluding its season with a second round loss in the NIT. It's a nice start. And here's why it's going to be even more impressive going forward. The number one, according to 24-7 Sports, Memphis has this year's number one overall recruiting class, including top recruit James Wiseman, who we'll hear from in just a moment. The Tigers added six, six top 100 recruits, four of which rate in the top 50. And finally, the numbers 26 and 15. In his senior season at Memphis East, Wiseman averaged nearly 26 points and 15 rebounds per game, including five and a half blocks per game. Mr. Tennessee basketball also, also knocked a triple-double to propel Memphis East to a 2019 regional championship. And uh, you can see this, sort of. I'm not a tall man. Many people are, are, are tall compared to me. James Wiseman didn't just tower over me when I interviewed him the other day. He towered over Carl Anthony Towns. He is a very, very impressive young man. He's a very impressive person as a person, as a player, and really enjoyed our conversation. You're going to be hearing a lot about him in the years ahead in the NBA. I'm standing in Vegas in large part. We're doing the show in large part because of Summer League. A year from now, he will be one of the most important draws to this event and really enjoyed the conversation we had with him back in L.A. a few days ago, and I think you will too. All right, we're here with James Wiseman, who has an opportunity, we'll find out in a few hours, to be the uh, Gatorade Athlete of the Year. How's it, uh, how's it feel to be, to be in contention for this award? Oh, it feels great. I mean, it's truly a blessing just to get this opportunity uh, to be amongst the best players in high school. So for me to just be able to be in this moment, I mean, it's just true. It's true testament to my hard work and dedication. Do you know much about the other folks that are nominated? Have you guys met? Did you do some research? What's the sort of process when you're coming in with other folks like you, very acclaimed? I actually did a lot of research on every player. And really just checking their stats out, it's, it's kind of amazing. But, I mean, just to be amongst these great players is truly a blessing. So we were just talking yeah. off camera. I lived in Arkansas. You, you're, you live in Memphis. It's hot there, but it, it's home for you. Obviously, I decided to stick around. What went into your decision making to try to figure out where you want to play at the college level? I'm just being home with my mom, but also better opportunities for me for the NBA in terms of Penny Hardaway. You got Mike Miller. Um, great NBA ex-legends, so for me to just be able to get opportunity, uh, information from them, it's actually a blessing just to have that. Yeah, what uh, what Coach Hardaway is putting together at Memphis is is really impressive. When did you really start to take note of how quickly it felt like things were coming together for him at the helm of that program? Really, when he just, just giving hope back to the city of Memphis, uh, when he got the head coaching job, everybody was just uh, sporadically just excited all throughout the city. Everybody was excited, so for me to just be there, just to boost that uh, energy, um, really, it's a great, great feeling to have. Every young man, every young woman that's in this room, thanks to Gatorade, like you, has an opportunity to choose yeah. where they want to play, highly coveted. People are going to go where they're going to go. You want to stay close to home. Yeah. For you, the opportunity to play, to, to use your skills in front of your community, what does that mean to you? What is that going to mean in, in, over the next year? Um, it means a lot. Uh, I mean, like I said, giving back to the city of Memphis, giving hope back to the uh, Memphis basketball program. So for me to just play there, and also we got the number one recruiting class coming in, a lot of great talent. I mean, it's going to be exciting for the city of Memphis. How much for your own development toward your NBA goal? How important do you think it is, not just what happens as a team, but in practice, having that level of talent to compete against every single day as you guys get ready for your own skills? Since we have a missed talent on the team, really just trying to sacrifice our egos, keep our egos at the door, and just work hard as a collective unit. And as we do that, we can most likely win that's championship this year. All right, so I'm an NBA guy. It feels like everyone's becoming an NBA guy, just fan-wise. Yes. Crazy NBA free agency. Who would you, whose game do you look at at the NBA level that you model yourself after or you'd like to emulate and grow into when you become a professional? Um, Giannis, oh, the MVP, just one MVP. And uh, I'll say uh, Anthony Davis as well. Anthony Davis, yeah. Those are both, and Anthony Davis, obviously, now going to be a guy in this city. We're sitting in Los Angeles, yeah. California. Yeah. What um just for you? What are the parts of your game you want to develop over the next over the next year? All aspects of my game, but also just my footwork. Just trying to polish that a little bit more, but just trying to grow mentally as a uh, as a player. So just studying film every day. Um, on great players that I model my game afterwards. You're obviously very tall. I mean, you're you're, you're a big dude. And 10, 15 years ago, no one would ever talk about a three-point shot. 
do you guys at, at sort of the high school level, do you AAU level talk about whatever your sort of build three-point shooting is going to be critical to the next few levels? Yeah, in today's generation, it's a lot of agile big men that can shoot the three and that can just put it on the floor and just dribble it. So for me to just develop my game like that, just studying the game and trying to model my game after players that I look up to, well, get my game to that level. You're right. I mean, having a handle, too, is every bit as yeah. important, isn't it, these days? Sorry. Do you like? How do you feel about the game, just sort of where it's developing high school, college, the NBA, relative to where it was five, ten years ago? Um, it's more like a guard-like systematic type system. Really, uh, it's a lot of bigs out here that's just being like big guards, big point guards, just taking the ball up the court, picking pops. So really, just you just have to be able to shoot and handle the ball well from my size. And if you can do that, then yeah, you can succeed at the next level. You so. said that winning a, a national championship is the goal, and you guys think that could be within reach. For you, and I know you're a young guy, but is, you're obviously here thanks to Gatorade. You're very talented. What are your goals? What are your hopes 5, 10, 20 years from now? My goal is just to be a philanthropist, a businessman, and also an investor. Just really just trying to impact the community in a positive way. It's just trying to give back to the unfortunate or people that are limited in resources and just trying to be a great person. And the basketball stuff will take care of itself. Congratulations on being nominated for the Gatorade Athlete of the Year. Congrats on all your success and future success, and, uh, and good luck in Memphis. Thank you. Thank you. What a, what a really cool young man. By the way, he did not end up winning that award. It went to Bobby Witt Jr., who was the number two overall pick in the MLB draft, a product now of a, or part of that Royals organization. We're actually going to play our interview with him, Bobby Witt Jr., tomorrow. Thank you to James Wiseman. Thank you to Carl Anthony Towns. Thank you to Gatorade. And certainly thank you to the Waldorf Astoria Sky Bar. Uh, just because I'm committed to you, the, the, the viewer, uh, I've tested several of the cocktails here at night. It is stellar. It is incredible. And if you ever come to Vegas, the view is amazing. It is the place to be. We appreciate them very much. We appreciate you watching. And we'll see you tomorrow back here on Riders Block, 5 Eastern, 2 Pacific.